everyone ready? Okay. Um, my name is Joseph Chuck and I'm the Interim Chief of Police for the Austin Police Department. Uh, it is, uh, we're here today to go ahead and give a briefing on an incident that has occurred this morning in our 6th Street Entertainment District area. Uh, just to give a little bit of background, uh, 6th Street on a Friday night is very busy. Uh, the streets are barricaded and we uh, have large crowds. We're seeing crowds uh, at, like we have seen uh, prior to COVID and uh, they're very, uh, uh, they're, they're in the street and very active. So this was around uh, 1.30 in the morning and I'll just go through a timeline that will, um, that will uh, provide a little uh, perspective on what happened tonight. At 1.24 a.m., uh, Austin 911 received a uh, call of shots fired in the area. Initially, we had uh, a report of three victims, and then as this incident unfolded, the number of victims, it became clear that uh, there were many, many victims in this incident. Multiple 911 calls began coming in at that point. Fire and EMS were also notified and were asked to, uh, to respond, but to stage until we could make the, the scene safe. At 1.26 uh, a.m., uh, we were able to obtain a suspect description. I'll give this description. It's, it is not uh, very detailed just based on the chaotic nature of the incident this evening. But it is a uh, black male wearing a black shirt with a skinny build and with dreadlocks, uh, dreadlock type hair. At 127, four to five more patients had been uh, called in and uh, one of them had very serious injuries. At 128, um, as uh, the crowd is starting to disperse at this point, we are trying uh, to get people uh, coordinated for uh, witnesses to, uh, to make the scene safe. And what became very clear early on in this uh, incident is that uh, our officers responded very quickly. They were able to uh, immediately begin life-saving measures for many of these patients, uh, including uh, applications of tourniquets, applications of uh, chest seals, and other types of first aid equipment that they carry on their person. And, uh, and, I'm, and I'm happy to report that at this moment, we do not have any persons that are deceased. We do have two patients that are in critical condition. We have a total of 11 people that were transported to, uh, to one hospital. Uh, one person was transported to a different hospital, and then one person uh, reported to an urgent care clinic with multiple gunshot, uh, gunshot wounds. So there's a total at, at this point that we're aware of of 13 victims that have been shot in this incident. As this incident was unfolding, and officers, uh, because of the nature, again, very large crowds, it was very difficult to contain the scene. It was very difficult for EMS to make their way into uh, this crowd. And because of the nature of the injuries, officers had to go ahead and use their police vehicles to put some of these shooting victims into the vehicles and transport them themselves to the hospital so that they could get the, the urgent care that they needed. Um, fire and EMS did manage to make their way and we had a total of uh, six uh, patients that were transported by police, four were transported by EMS, and then three patients uh, transported themselves in a personal vehicle. So at this point, uh, we're reviewing all of the video, video sources that we have. Uh, we have our uh, HALO uh, public safety camera system downtown. 
We have officers with their body-worn cameras, uh, as well as many businesses have surveillance video in this area, and all of those video sources will be reviewed. Uh, our aggravated assault and homicide unit detectives are out here investigating at this time, uh, as well as members of our organized crime and our gang units uh, to, from that perspective, to see if this incident was gang related or uh, what other type of motive there might have been in this uh, shooting incident. It's not clear at this point what sparked this off or why this happened, uh, but out of an abundance of caution, uh, we have notified the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force, uh, which, is, uh, which comes out on active shooter type scenarios in order to help with those investigations and they are on the scene as well. Um, what we're asking for at this point is for anyone that might have information on this, might have been down here and either witnessed something or if video was taken that's on a cell phone um, owned by somebody in our, in our community for, for them to go ahead and contact us. Uh, you can either call 911 or you can call our tip line at 512-472-TIPS. Uh, that is about as much information as I have on this inf incident right now. It is very fresh and we're still have the area shut down. It will be shut down for quite a few hours. It is a large crime scene um, and I'm, I'm very grateful at this point that we do not have more people uh, that are deceased. I do believe that it was uh, the, the actions of our officers who responded very quickly and have been trained in life-saving measures, including uh, use of their first aid kits and tourniquets that they carry on their person uh, to be able to uh, quickly apply that first aid and, and help people uh, that were in uh, serious uh, injury, serious distress. Um, up here I have also uh, with me uh, people from uh, the FBI, from uh, the Austin Fire Department, from EMS, and then other uh, folks here from the Austin Police Department. That is all of my prepared comments at this point. Like I said, this is still a pretty um, new incident and, and very uh, unfolding at this point, but I will take a few questions if there's anything that I can answer. Yeah, thank you. Uh, one of the things that I forgot to mention is, is the exact location where this occurred. It occurred in the 400 block of East 6th Street. Um, and so that, it seems to be isolated at this point, but that is something that's still being investigated. As a police officer, what's going through your mind when this kind of scenario happens? Obviously, the first thing is trying to save people's lives, uh, as well as get identify a suspect and get that person into custody. Uh, you know, I think that we did the first part and we're working on the second part right now. Have all the suspects been caught and um, is the public is in any, any danger right now? I would say that the public, I cannot, I cannot say that there's no further public danger at this point uh, because uh, the suspect is not in custody. So, um, it, it appears at this point to be isolated to this one area, uh, but as we receive more information on that, we'll put it out. Yes? Uh, is there possibly any connection to the Rot Rally being in town? You know, the Rot Rally is here, and uh, that does bring in large crowds. I don't have any information right now that it's directly related to that. Is, is there any chance uh, at a potential, like, a, a potential to shut down 6 there or tighten up security? You know, security is always uh, pretty good down here because of the way that we cordon off the streets, block off the streets, uh, it, using barricades and, uh, and try to keep people safe that way. We have a, a lot of officers that are assound, assigned to our downtown area command and that, um, that actually work in this area. Uh, there's a high visible presence of officers. Uh, we try to keep it as safe as we can, but what we have seen in recent months 
and over the last uh, you know year or so is an increase in our gun violence and so this is just emblematic of that it continues and uh, it's something that we're really trying to work to decrease I'm oh, sorry could you tell me just a few of the factors of why the FBI were called in on this anytime that we have a potential of a active shooter or a, uh, a scene that might be some type of, there might be a domestic terrorism nexus, uh, we call them in. At this point, I don't know that that is the case. Uh, it cannot be ruled out, and therefore we call them in early on so that they come early on in the investigation. Do you have an idea of how many shooters there were, or how many gunmen there were? No, not at this point. What about what caliber of weapon was used? Don't know that at this point. Any word on what kind of weapon? No, I don't know that at this point. And just to recheck again, you said how many victims was it again total? So we have a total of 13 victims. 11 are at one hospital, we have one at a different hospital, and then one at an urgent care clinic. And no fatalities? At this time, no. But we do have two that are in critical condition. What do you suggest people do when they're out on 6th Street if something like this were to occur again? Like, what, what should people think of first? You know, we always tell people when they're in the uh, when they're in large crowds like this, when they come down to the entertainment district, to uh, just be vigilant, uh, to to take care, to take the type of uh, steps that you would want them to take, uh, that we would want them to take, to keep themselves safe, including you know um, being being with other people uh, and to to just be very aware. Uh, have a plan if you are going to be drinking on how you're going to get home, those type of things. But we try to create a safe environment for them. Any questions? Do you know how many officers were downtown on 6th Street when this happened? I don't have the exact number right now. Last question. Was the, officer, was the uh, gentleman that was laying on the ground by the cone in that one scene, was he connected with the victim of this? So we had, we had multiple victims that at, at one point or another were laid on the ground. So, uh, you know, that's when our officers were applying, like I said, the life-saving measures, and, uh, and ultimately we got them all transported. Thank you all very much.